So in the next few talks, I'm going to be discussing uses of agent-based modeling and what it's good for. Uh, and what I mean by that is that age-based modeling has particular advantages, particular reasons uh, that it might help you accomplish certain tasks. And there are essentially eight uh, tasks, eight uh, uses of ABM uh, that we've kind of uh, examined. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to talk about each of these in uh, turn, right? Uh, but essentially they're description, uh, explanation, experimentation, analogy or analogical thinking, uh, education and communication, uh, the development of a touchstone or a focal object, uh, thought experiments, and prediction. So description. An agent-based model is essentially an attempt to describe uh, a real-world system or in some cases actually an artificial system, uh, but it is a simplified description, but still a description of that system. Right? Thus, in some ways, an agent-based model is similar to a textual model, a model that you might just write down a description of what you're observing around you. right? Um, it's important to note that models that are not simplified are, are, are useless, right? And in fact, there's a, a great story uh, by Borges on this on, in a book he wrote called On Exactitude in Science, where he describes a map maker who tries to build a map that is a one-to-one -one map of the real world. Well, if you think about it, a map that exactly scales to the real world, includes all the detail of the real world, is useless because to do it, to use it, you basically have to travel through the real world. Um, so in this context, right, models that are not simplified, that are not simple representations of the real world, are in fact not very useful for us. Um, and of course, Albert Einstein is often paraphrased as saying, make your model as simple as possible, but no simpler. By the way, that quote is in some ways a model. He never said those exact same words, uh, but he said something very similar several times as far as we can tell. Um, but that's the basic idea, right? You wanna make your models a simple description of real world phenomenon. Asia-based models are often used as an explanation of the potential underlying phenomenon that control a this system. So you can think of them as a proof of concept, right? If I have an idea of how the system might work, right, then I can build a model that exemplifies that method and then see if it's possible to create uh, the same phenomenon, the same aggregate level phenomenon that I see based upon those first principles. In other words, they illuminate the power of emergence, right? They allow us to codify simple first level rules, run them together and see if we get the emergent patterns of behavior that we hope to see around us. Agent-based models can also be used for experimentation. By this we mean that agent-based models can be run repeatedly under slightly different conditions to observe the resultant changes, right? And you know, the truth of the matter is, is that you know, this is different than a lot of the other ways of doing science, right? In other formats of science, you simply can't run every possible experiment, right? Or you might not observe all those possible conditions that you want to collect data about. Agent-based models allow you to kind of look through all those cases and see what the results might be as a result. We can then change the model if we want and see what happens next. And then we can eventually maybe observe a set of results that are um, something that we did not observe in real world data. And then we can go back to real world data and attempt to validate those experiments. Finally, we can use agent-based models for analogical thinking. Uh, for instance, imagine the model of flocking birds that we talked about early on. Those, that model of flocking birds, even if it was originally used to describe birds flocking, can also help us to understand fish schooling and has been done, used to understand how locusts uh, might swarm in, the cases, in some cases. We can also take systems that are created through agent-based models and use them to help us understand systems that are nothing like the models that they were originally used to design. So in the case of birds and fish and locusts, we're all talking about biological systems, right? But it, we could also use models of flocking behavior, for instance, to help us understand engineered systems, say groups of drones, right? And try and understand how they might be able to interact easily with each other and design algorithms to help us understand uh, their patterns of behavior.